Okay, this is the Buffalo Forge uh, 200 silent. Uh, thought I'd do a rebuild on it, so I took it off the forge tray, brought it inside to uh, a friend's shop out of the weather. Um, and it's like all the old stuff, stupid simple. And I wish more stuff was like this. Um, anyway, it's kind of an oil bath to keep the gears uh, wet and lubricated. But there's bearings here. Um, let me back up. Uh, although it's called the silent model, it's been incredibly noisy for me. Um, so anyway, finally got the opportunity to uh, take this thing apart, sort it out. I thought it would be a pain in the ass finding bearings, but... God bless engineers from a hundred years ago or more. Um, just incredibly, incredibly smart. Um, I've repacked these two bearings and, uh, and I'll show you, just show you quickly on this one here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll get this without me knocking the camera around. This is kind of like an old steering gear adjustment. Um, get this outer lock nut, and this is your actual adjustment, which is this screw body here. You can't just unscrew the screw body. You have to you have to loosen the the lock nut. And I've got a shitty adjustable wrench to do that. Oh no. Yeah, figures I get the camera out and it turns into a struggle. I don't like using the plow wrench, but there we go. Yeah, that's the lock nut. And then uh, should be able, yeah, there we go. Years of red paint and crud, but it's kind of like a Swiss movement. There is, wipe this off, there's essentially, focus is going to suck here, there we go, there's a little, little needle bearing there, which interfaces another, it's not a needle bearing, my guess is this at one time was round, or inside the body of that, this little, little divot was round, probably can't see that at all. Oh, for a good camera, that'd be cool. Anyway, um, this locates the gear mesh, and that's the only point of contact at the end of each shaft, which is like no friction at all. So my guess is the noise I've been getting is gear lash, because there is a little bit of wear there. And the other is on the blower fan, there's actually a, a bearing, but it's not anything like most of you've probably seen. Um, but anyway, I'll go through the process of uh, washing this out a little bit and repacking it. There are no seals in this. There's no felts. There's nothing. And I don't think anyone's ever, ever been through it. So I'm going to rinse that inside out with some good old WD-40. And then... I will apply a uh, I'll get some red out. I'll apply a big old slug of red and tacky grease. Be a couple slugs here. And then um, I'm going to take this and make sure that the uh, the set screw is uh, make sure the set screw is is free, and then I'll be right back here. All right, like I've stated before, 
videos about tractor rebuilding. My focus in life is not to do restorations. I ain't gonna be around long. <laughs> so I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time beating the shit out of myself. Perfectly restoring something that I can make work. So in that mantra of my current life is uh, if parts broke, replace it. If it's dirty, maybe clean it up a little bit, but don't go through the struggle of sandblasting and baths and shit. I mean, honestly, I'm not making a living at this thing. But anyway, well, you probably missed it, so I'm going to back this out just for the hell of it. Rearrange the camera and do it again. You'll see. You'll see. I'm going to put a fresh plug of grease in here. And then I'm going to let you see the inside of this operation and what happens. The rolling cart. When I, when I put this plug in, it's gonna wash out that bearing surface by pushing all the grease into this body. Kind of like a, uh, I don't know how many of you were in the military or worked on uh, grease zerts and grease relief zerts, but um, if you're using a grease relief zert, what that does, it keeps you from overpacking a bearing or a hub and blowing out seals. Uh, it's got a little spring and under pressure it'll relieve grease, but just watch right down here as I screw this dude in. You should see some grease come out. Yeah, there it comes. See it gooing out there. So anyway, that's what that is. And then, uh, Probably didn't show up at all. Yeah. Have some goo here. Okay, but anyway, um, use this screw to adjust your your gear set, get them in alignment, and then lock these set screws in. You don't want it too tight, or they won't turn at all. Just enough to turn and be quiet in the right position. So I'll pack that one and that one. And uh, I'm gonna shut this down and flip this over. And I think I've already done that one too. I already did that one. Oh, here's the cool part. Uh, the bearings for the uh, impeller. Um, you have this is shitty as well. You have, there is a, a race in there of sorts, but it's not like you, you see on a wheel bearing. Um, it's actually, if I'm correct, yes, it's mostly, mostly flat in there. Turn this around. Yeah, there's some light get the camera around here okay got the camera around where are we here we are so there's the impeller race there's a number of ball bearings that lay down in there and then what you can't see very well here is a uh, where's my where's my crap let me just get this out hold on Still there? I'll go ahead and do this. I'll flush that goo out of there. Clean up some old caked on grease. Yeah, 
yeah, younger, stupider me would uh, struggle and completely disassemble this. Now, mind you, I'm itching to right now. But I'm not gonna. Because that would be dumb. Because there's no need to make it all pretty. Let's just make it all serviceable. There's a little bit of corrosion in there. Nice. There's some Q-tips. I was going to take this shaft out until I saw that there was no no reason to. Once again, those uh, smart boys back in the day realized that to be productive, keep the machine rolling, you know? Rebuild this in position. Well, that's a heck of a lot cleaner than it, than it was. Alrighty. Now let me show you this. So we got these, we got all these little bearings here. I'm not gonna take them out of the bag, but they roll around in that little flat race I showed you earlier. And then this is your, this is your cone and it screws onto that shaft and applies uh, force for adjustment on those bearings. And I think it's just genius. For being as old as this is, there's practically, practically Practically, it's almost nowhere at all. That's that's threaded. And like I said, that that focus again. Yeah, that screws onto that shaft and applies pressure to those bearings, and that's that. And then there's a lock nut that goes on top of it. So I'm going to uh, pack this dude with grease. And uh, maybe I'll show you the uh, maybe I'll show you the assembly. We'll see what happens. Rip some more of that varnish out of there. Okay. All right. By the way, WD-40 is not a lubricant. For those of you that don't know, works great for cleaning. It's a uh, Oh, there's YouTube videos out there. I ain't going to explain it. Water displacement. <laughs> That's what it's about. I got that dude cleaned up. Um, yeah, hopefully this isn't too much of a struggle bus. I think I'll put some grease in there now. Should help. I think it'll help hold those bearings in there. It puts the it puts the lotion on the skin. Yeah, 
that's not going well. Paper towel that out again. WD-40 is messing with me. Just want to break that grease down. I left too much of a pool in there. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna go for the bearings here. Get the, get the lock nut and thrust washer out. Clean him up. How's it going, Mikey? It's good. I went all in. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> but I'm about done. As long as I don't lose the ball bearing. Famous last words. Bearings are in a compartment with a screw on the lid. Wow, you don't see that. <laughs> no. It's uh it's a level of genius we'll never see again, Mike. I believe that. They're adjustable. Bigger girl. That's amazing that you can reuse the bear. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. That, whoever designed that was probably a real engineer. <laughs> yeah. Who thought about having to redo it? Yeah. Engineers nowadays, they don't care who's redoing it. Uh -uh. They don't even think about redoing it. Yeah, them good old days are gone, Mikey. Yeah. Yeah, they just want to want you to buy a new one. Yeah. That's how they do it now. Wear it out, buy a new one. I think they've been doing that for a long time, but they're still doing it. <laughs> It'd be nice if they'd stop someday. A keyway in there somewhere. Well, they 
See, what makes the economy steam right is building things that's replenishable. You got to redo it. Yeah. It's great if you got a bunch of money. Yeah, the, the, the people who set them rules and stuff, that, that's the ones who have the money. We're making the money off the stuff you're buying. You have a good evening. Have a good, Muggy. my little buddy Mikey hell of a good guy if you need something cleaned up sorted out organized he's the man to man to look for okay I'm going to uh, leave these for adjustment once I probably mount it back on the, the forge but uh, these get too two caps and I'll go ahead and pack that with grease that one's packed with grease and uh, I'll uh, like I said I'll just put this back together so I'm not losing anything or getting more crud in it than I need to have in it so that caps here somewhere there's a cap grease cap that's a yeah, that's a little that's a little grubby I'll clean him out and then I'll uh, I'll come back okay I got this cap cover cap cleaned off so one goes here one goes here um, This takes kind of a, since I've used it, it's always taken a constant refill. What I've found is it makes its way to the impeller and then gets slung into the forge. It's never really leaked around here. But, uh, and I've found no, no kind of washers or gaskets. I don't know if it had them or if it was just a, you know, like they, did back in the day with oil systems that are a constant loss. Not sure. But anyway. I guess a fella could uh, seal that with thread tape, maybe? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to go that far. Alright, that's how that goes. All right, one more cap to do and uh, I'll clean up and maybe take some finishing shots here. Okay, I've got all the, all the guts in here. Uh, this is all pretty gooey and gritty from uh, mice living in it. So I don't have a good place here to rinse all that out. So I'll probably, uh, like I said, get this back together, get it hooked up on the forge, and then uh, I'll probably liberally hose that out with some oil, catch it in a pan, and then uh, probably take these these bearings back out and repack them. But it's just kind of it's actually harder to do this harder to do all this than, you know, it's harder to do this than when it's on the workbench, so, uh, 
I guess I'll just show you how it kind of goes back together. And like I said, back in the day, I would have uh, would have sandblasted all this, but uh, that's a heck of a casting. That's really cool. But uh, that dude goes in there just like that. Somewhere down here, I've got a I've got a uh, somewhere. Where'd it go? Here, Jesus, help me. There it is. Maybe. Is that you? Nice and wet and gooey. Yeah. I think that's who you are. A little quarter twenty. Tapered screw. <laughs> there we go. Come on. Oh, I'll say it ain't so. Okay. There we go. All right. Nope, that's the wrong one. I'm missing two of these. Should I say missing one of these? This came from the other side. That's what that is. Okay. You know, like that hole. Put you back over here where you came from. Yep. Not so silent without oil in there. Okay, maybe, maybe one day I'll get one of those. Fix that dude up. Look at what I do to a workbench. It's great. It's not. Anyway. Okay. Y'all are going to hate me for this. For what I'm about to do. Cleanest dirty rag. Cleanest dirty shirt. Do it here. This is the uh, inside blower plate, and it's yeah. Well, that's disgusting. <laughs> um, no, that is that is not good. I'm sorry. I will clean that up a lot better. So that's pretty boring. So I'm gonna stop this portion of the video here, and then get back with you. All right, I got this kind of cleaned up. Um, although the internal engineering is pretty cool, they didn't spend a lot, spend a lot of time with uh, fit and finish on here. So, uh, just give that the tolerance it needs. Um, I'll probably have to come back in here and adjust this once I uh, get it on the forge for the direction to get into the tire. Um, and if you'll notice, I'm, uh, I'm not soaking this uh, hardware in uh, lacquer thinner or, uh, yeah, lacquer thinner was my choice. Although deadly, Did a great job of cutting through grime and uh, leaving parts really clean so you could uh, sandblast them or wire brush them or whatever you're gonna do. But I'm not gonna do it. Not got that. Oh, 
Okay, I had a wrench. I just got a bunch of grease on me. I've over applied. Somewhere. Where did my, there it is. do this old school I always take this old stuff apart with uh, impact tools and you should too there's several ways to loosen uh, stuff fasteners and uh, I've tried them all and through a lot of failures the best ways I found is to first Try an impact. Never try a wrench. Because um, an impact will generally break that little rust hold free pretty quickly without putting a lot of torque and tension on stuff. That feels a little funky. Um, that's not tightening up all the way. I'm just going to leave that as it is. Anyway, uh, impact first. If the impact doesn't get it, I'll generally apply heat with map gas. To, uh, to the hardware, get it good and hot, let it cool down, and then hit it with the impact again, and that generally gets it every time. If that doesn't get it, then I will coat that dude down with penetrant oil, walk away, and uh, come back, hit it with the torch again, and then the impact, and generally it always comes free. But as a young man, I wish I had a nickel for every piece of old nut and bolt I broke, but that's a long story. Okay, now it's time for this impeller. Look at that dude. I'll probably clean that up a little bit, mostly to get all the mouse turds off. Then it goes on that shaft with a uh, with a set screw, and then. Uh, cover goes on. I'll be back. I'm back. This is as clean as this is going to get for me. Um, I mean, tell you, this, this is crazy. Clean the goo off. And the old boy's actually balanced this blade. It's nuts. You'd never see that. You'd never see that today ever copper copper rivets that's cool looks like one of them's taking a hit here straighten him out there we go yeah it's deformation from no it's not there we go some of these are deformed from when they put the deformed from putting the copper rivets in and the, the weights. So, all right, this uh, con uh, cave side goes away, and then uh, set screw was down here. So I'm gonna let me just show you guys a trick. Uh, Whoever gets this next might want to take it apart again, and I'm going to do them a great favor and put some nickel anti-seas on the shaft. A little messy, but uh, it uh, it'll make a difference certainly down the line for the next poor fellow that decides to take this apart. And it actually came off pretty easy. But if I can help a brother out, I'll help a 
help the brother out. Let me get this started first. That way, I ain't got to crunch on it 400 times. Yeah, that's me. He's lower than that. Don't want it contacting the, uh, you don't want it contacting the body or any of the hardware in there. Hmm. Makes me wonder about the other side. Well, anyway, I'm gonna get this close get it back out in the woods to where I can uh, adjust it later. For now. And that, that had a lot more. What's that? Maybe a half inch, quarter inch play? Before it was half inch play before I adjusted those bearings the little bit that I did. So that's the impeller. And then we get the cover. And I'll clean the mice out of it too. I'll be back. I'm back with the closure of the uh, 14 inch Buffalo 200 silent. And uh, yeah. I broke one uh, screw. That was it. Even with all of my tried and true methods, just 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 broke it. But fortunately, I think one that's broke. I'll put was broke. I'll put here. Or should I say it's replacement? I'll put it there. So it's more in keeping with the original design. Or maybe I'm, I'm missing one? Four. That's four knots. Three bolts. There's one hiding from me on here somewhere. Won't do these too tight, just enough to hold the cover on and get it back out to the woods. Yeah, I got a little screw hiding from me. So I've got the uh, got the nut. Nope. Really? Yep, one's hiding from me. I'll find it. Oh, I'll find it. Okay. There it is, 14 inch Buffalo, 200 silent. I think it will be a bit more silent now. After uh, packing and adjusting those bearings, well, I don't know how well packing's going to do because there's no no seals or provisions for a seal that I saw. But anyway, there it is. There it is. I think that's it for this. I gotta go, go clean my hands. What's that popular phrase? Dirty hands, clean money. What a joke. All money's dirty. Kids, wake up. After a bit of internet sleuthing, 
I found that uh, these buffalo forges were also called leakers. Um, and most all the oil just leaked out of this area, which makes sense. Apparently, um, there was originally a felt packing, which I've replicated here with some uh, uh, synthetic felt and uh, might turn to goo, I hope not. And then uh, a piece of cardboard. So uh, that's the packing that's supposed to be in here. So maybe someone has been on this before um, but uh, I'm gonna try this and uh, see how it works uh, I thought about getting a, a legitimate uh, seal but the factory has ground a keyway in the shaft which will eat a rubber seal and uh, ultimately just cause it to leak again maybe this uh, felt and cardboard cardboard solution will be a little better than a than a raggedy rubber seal maybe uh, some grit and whatnot might you know plug up that keyway uh, we'll see what happens but uh, I won't do a video of the install uh, I'll just uh, go from here and put this back together I cut the cardboard a little uh, larger than the OD of the shaft, and I cut the felt a little smaller than the OD of the shaft, packed that with grease, and uh, there it is. Uh, it's doing as I thought it would do. Uh, this uh, cup has a larger OD than the OD of the, a larger ID than the OD of the shaft, and it's uh, done what I thought it would do, and it's pushed that that felt into that opening so that might might slow it a little bit but uh, I'll be putting probably 90 weight gear oil in here maybe some uh, I don't know maybe some Lucas oil thick stuff uh, anyway just uh, meshing gears because the bearings are greased so anyway I think this is uh, this is it until I get it set up on the forge.